Well, here we are at the beginning of June now, and still the roses are coming. Here is an interesting rose I thought I'd show you, and that is Rose La France. Now this rose dates from 1867, uh, bred in France, and it's reckoned to be the first hybrid tea rose. That is a tea rose crossed with a hybrid perpetual rose and the forerunner of a lot of modern hybrid tea roses. This is the very first one. A historic rose, but also very beautiful. Well, here we have uh, the yellow flowered evergreen dogwood from China. Cornus capitata, which is slightly tender. The so called flowers are in fact bracts, that's modified leaves, very yellow in this form, and also a very jolly, I would say. Cornus capitata, and that central boss, which are actually the flowers turn into big strawberries in about September. So the tree has another showing covered in these red strawberry-like fruits. Coming up past a couple of nice French roses. These ones are called La Comtesse de Ségur. La Comtesse de Ségur. Out in the sun, we've got a couple of David Austin roses. Coming around the uh, unknown portion in the walled garden where the wildflowers bulbs are. You can see glinting away in the distance a sweet little flower of a sort of salmon pink colour. The South African bulb of the uh, iris family, gladiolus family called Anomatheca laxa. It used to be called La Perusia when I planted this in 1982 and it seeded itself happily around but then they changed the name to this much less romantic Anomatheca. Never mind, it's still a very beautiful little gladiolus Anomatheca laxa. As I mentioned, the first tree I planted in this bullock field, as it was then, is this tulip tree. And come June, it is covered in flowers. And I think I said in the previous video that it's totally difficult to see the flowers until you do see them. See what I mean? <laughs> and then they become quite obvious. But they are a sort of yellowy green colour. It might be easier to see them from this side. So then now we've got the rambling rose. Betty Sheriff. And here she is draping herself over Ali Agnes Quicksilver, which has tiny yellow flowers and a very powerful scent. 
Maybe it's been done before, but I think the pink flowers with the silver foliage is very nice and attractive. So there we are. Beginning of June, she sees the uh, more flowering on the horse chestnuts, which I love. This particular one is a 12 year old specimen of the Indian horse chestnut, Aeschylus indica, and it's a selected form called Sydney Pierce. Found at Kew and found to be really very uh, floriferous with its rather multicolored flower spikes. Come back and see the whole thing. Of course, it's lovely as a young tree. It'll get very big in time, but it flowers so profusely. And the leaves are a lot more delicate than the ordinary horse chestnut that we grow mainly. And here we have a tree we've seen before. That's the red buckeye, Aeschylus pavia, or Aeschylus splendens, doing its splendid red flowered flowering. And here is yet another horse chestnut which I said in my last video, I do adore. It's from California, the Californian Buckeye or Aeschylus Californica. And here is the flower, whitish with a shade of pink and various other little orange bits. The difference between that one and the Indian horse chestnut is that this one has got a fantastically sweet scent. Coming up this somewhat shaded path, we come across uh, two shrubs, a lovely double Philadelphus, whose name I can't recall and then next to it the start of the Californian rose in its double form Rosa Californica plena wonderful scent I think the two together coming up the path rather good with the very dark leaves of the photinia behind. Here is an interesting small tree shrub really but it's 35 years old so it's grown quite a lot. It's uh, from quite far south in South America and it goes by the name of Iochroma australi. Australia only because it's from the Southern Hemisphere rather than Australia. In fact, this is from Argentina and it's hung with little blue bells. And the interesting thing is, as we come around over the 35 years, it's grown into a wonderful shape and it's got the most amazing sort of warty trunk. Which I've preserved by taking out any of the shoots that come up through it. It really is almost reptilian. Now, where the camellias once flaunted their very showy flowers, if you walk quickly, you're liable to pass this bush, which is mingled in there with the camellias. 
and has these sweet little red flowers. And this bush is Elysium Henryi. And in addition, it has foliage which you crush and it's aromatic, like most of the Elysiums. Coming from under the uh, the old decapitated cedar. I've noticed on the yew hedge the, the nasturtium called Tropiolum speciosum, speciosum meaning beautiful, from Chile. Also bizarrely known as the Scotch flame flower. Traditionally grown through yew hedges. This one is aimed for the top, which is the sunniest bit, but it likes its roots in shade. Over yonder, indulging in a bit of a colour clash, is the uh, mauve purple pea flowers of the Indigofera hybrid Silk Road, which is very floriferous. And quite frankly, it looks like it ought to be delicious. The clashing with it, with its orangey red flowers, is Grevillea Williamsoni. And if you're standing here, you can hear the bees working away at it with a nod, a passing nod to the Indigofera. But they do really, the honeybees do really love this Grevillea. Must be absolutely full of nectar. corner of the tennis court we come across a massive arching shrub from western China which is a fantastic sucker and curse worthy if it's in a small confined space. Nelia Tibetica but next to it is another arching shrub which can be quite a big grower and that is Deutzia Magician with its bicoloured flowers. Having said, I don't like to grow my peonies in a peony ghetto or bed. I still have one up here. And they are beautiful. I particularly like these uh, Japanese ones with the sort of pom-pom centre to them. Coming round the other side. I say they are pretty astonishingly blousy, aren't they? Peonies. Yeah, 